What's up, buds? It's your bud, Bolt. Today, I'm going to let you know everything I think you should know for your very first game of hockey. So we're going to talk about before we even get to the rink. And the first thing I want to cover is that if your league has an opening meeting, go to it. I don't care if you don't know anybody. I don't care if you think it's going to be awkward. I don't care if you need to make time out of your schedule. Go to it. It's going to be a plethora of information. You're going to meet a lot of people. And people will probably be more friendly than you think they will. Make sure you ask questions about the rules, about the code of conduct, about what gear you need like we covered in the very first video. Make sure you ask how you're going to find out what dressing room your team's in. Is there a board at the rink? Is there a TV to look at? Is it on the game sheet? Find out if you need to sign the game sheet before you need to go into your room. Ask if the whole league might go somewhere after the game. The league I played in, everybody went to the same bar after the game. And so it's a good idea to know that ahead of time so you can make sure you've got the time to go after the game because that's something I highly do recommend is going out to the bar with your team if they're going. Find out if your team does drinks in the room afterwards. If you're playing an adult league, sometimes if it's allowed by the rules of the league, teams will enjoy a nice beer while they're still in half their gear uh, after a hard game of hockey and this can look many different ways so it's good to ask whether it's going to be a BYOB situation or like a soccer orange situation where each week somebody brings a case. Make sure your sticks are taped before you get to the rink. You're going to have less time at the rink than you think and it's going to be much easier to tape your sticks when there's not a whole lot of pressure on you. If you need to learn how to tape a stick the video with how I showed you how to tape my sticks is in the description. Once your sticks are taped, pack your bag and double check everything. I like to, before I leave, make sure that I've got everything in the bag in the order that I put it on so that I'm sure I've got everything. So I start in reverse order. Okay, I have my helmet. I put my helmet on last. I have my gloves. I have, and you go down the list while getting dressed so you're sure you don't miss anything. Make sure you're including flip-flops and a towel if you plan on showering after the game. Have a light meal in a full glass of water. Prehydrating is important, but you don't want to be peeing the entire time you're on the ice. Also, a heavy meal can weigh you down, and if you're not used to the extreme amount of intense exertion that hockey brings, it might not be a good idea for your stomach. So have a nice light meal before you leave for the rink. I highly suggest trying to poop because I can't tell you how many times I've gotten to the rink and it happens, I've gotta go. So while you're at home, just even if you feel like you don't have to, just try, you never know, and it's gonna be much better to poop at home than it will be in the rink. Hop on Google Maps and check to see how long it's gonna to take to get to the rink. You're gonna to wanna to make sure you get there 30 minutes before the game, so you arrive at the rink 30 minutes before your scheduled start time. This is gonna give you lots of time to get dressed, if you have more time than you need, that is more than okay the first day. Also keep in mind that your start time might be before or after the Zamboni has gone on. Sometimes they include the Zamboni in the 10 minutes of the previous ice time. Sometimes they include it in the 10 minutes at the start of your ice time. So you might, if you get there 30 minutes early, actually end up with 40 or you might only end up with 20 depending on when the Zamboni goes on. So I suggest get there 30 minutes earlier, make sure Google Maps is letting you know when so that you're aware of traffic and make sure when you're Google Mapsing, you're searching for the proper day and time because they'll have traffic updates. Take a deep breath. Before you leave, you're probably gonna be nervous. You're gonna be asking yourself, what have I gotten myself into? You might not know anybody. Take a deep breath, it's gonna be okay. You're gonna leave the rink feeling accomplished feeling like you've gotten a good workout and more than likely with a new buddy or two. So just take it easy. It's okay to be nervous. It's okay to have the jitters. Congratulations on getting this far because it took a lot of courage. And just remember that you're starting where you are because you've actually started and that's more than a lot of people do. Before you leave, according to that Google Maps time, I do wanna say, make sure you're only bringing essential valuables with you. Any jewelry, leave that at home. Bring your wallet with your license, um, your phone, your keys, 
Um, and if you can possibly leave your purse at home, do that. Uh, purses are something great for people to snatch in dressing rooms and that's the thing make sure that if you can leave it in possibly your car if your car is safer and the rink is in a fairly safe area um, hide things away in your car and uh, don't bring things into the rink that aren't necessary personally I like to hide things like in the trunk so when I'm pulling out my gear I'll just toss some stuff in the trunk that I would like to stay in the car um, or my center console or glove box especially if they lock Once you're at the rink, find your dressing room, go to your dressing room and put your bag down. Just sit where you want. There aren't any like set spots except for the goalie. <laughs> if there is a big corner or like a small bench area um, that looks like it could fit maybe one really big person there, leave that. The goalie more than likely will sit there. They need a lot of room to get dressed compared to players. So just find yourself a spot that isn't in a corner or on a small bench, unless the goalie is already there and pick their spot. If the goalie is already there and pick their spot, sit literally wherever you want. Then just meet people. People will be slowly trickling in. More than likely, somebody's gonna come in with some jerseys. You'll get to pick out your jersey. And people will probably be introducing themselves to you. So don't be surprised if people start talking to you. Hockey is a very social game. It's a team sport and everyone's there to have fun and meet some friends. Now it's a great time to explain that it's your very first game either to the league or to the game in general. Folks might offer you tips and advice and insight into the league and insight into the culture and drink this in. This is absolutely priceless information to have. You might gain the title of like rookie and it might become a nickname but just take it as a sense of pride because they all started there too everybody in that room was once a rookie was once a beginner once had a very very first game so just uh, take it as a sense of pride and take it as a sense of like trying to bond so that's that's often what's happening is somebody's calling you a rookie you get you that might be your name for the rest of the season you might be known as the rookie and uh, just just smile at it and realize that it's because they're happy you're there. They're happy to have somebody new to the game, um, and they're they're acknowledging that that this is this is your first step in your entire um, lovely journey of the game. Make sure that in this time that we're chatting and hanging out in the dressing room, you're asking about lines. Um, they might have a system for lines that you don't know about, so just casually like hey like so how do lines work like how are we going to make lines when does that happen um that should be something that they just readily let you know before you get dressed pee you might have to go in the lobby to find a bathroom that has an actual toilet if that is something that you need if you can use a urinal uh there's usually one in the dressing room i've never been in a dressing room without a urinal but sometimes there is not a toilet also, sometimes there's no stall. Sometimes it's literally just a toilet um, in a little separate area that also has the shower and the sink that people will be in and out of. So if that's important to you or if you absolutely need a toilet in order to pee, definitely go into the lobby. There's more than likely one there. So get dressed all the way to your skates. So your Jill, your shin pads, your socks, your pants, your skates done up. If you get lost along the way, just have a look around at people who are also getting dressed and see what they're putting on in what order. If you can't follow that, just ask somebody. There's gonna be lots of people around to give you a hand. That's okay. Now, I suggest getting dressed all the way to your skates because the rest of the stuff is quick and easy to put on. The skates are the longest. Um, and so you can hang out in that until it's actually time for you to get the rest on because that might have taken you five minutes. Maybe you're a super speed dresser and you're just finding out about it and there's still 25 minutes to game time. So just get dressed to your skates and uh, you can head out and have a look at the game that's happening. Check the clock, see how far along they are. There's three periods in the game of hockey and if you've read the rules, it'll tell you how long each period is. So it'll give you a general idea of how long until your game or you can go by the clock there's normally just a regular digital clock out there when it's about 10 minutes to game time usually when the zamboni hits the ice head on back into the dressing room and get the top of everything on so get dressed the rest of the way 
and make sure you take off your skate guards. 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 If there is one thing I want you to leave this video with is that you need to take off your skate guards. So that is a great way to end up absolutely, uh, it depends on who you are, but a lot of people would be so humiliated their first day. If you leave your skate guards on and try and step on the ice, you are going to have one heck of a wipeout because you're not going to be expecting it and cloth is going to hit the ice and you're going to more than likely fall backwards and hit your head. Take your skate guards off. Because then it'll be the, the, the only thing people can talk about for a few weeks. And you don't want that to be the one thing that they talk about. Um, so take your skate guards off. Take your skate guards off. Literally the second you put your skates on, take your skate guards off. Just take your skate guards off. On the other side of that, we've all forgotten to take our skate guards off. So everybody has been there. Everybody has stepped out on the ice and wiped out because they're wearing their skate guards. I did it on TV. So just keep that in mind. Some teams might have a bag of valuables they bring to the bench and so some teams will lock the door to the to the rink room but some people have like a bag that everybody puts all their like wallets and phones and keys in and they actually bring that to the bench so that there's less likely a chance that that will be stolen if your dressing room is broken into depends on the rink so some rinks are safer than others if there is a lock put everything in your pockets or stuff them somewhere hidden in your hockey bag. Don't leave things just out. Things that are out are more likely to be stolen. One rule that almost every rink has is that nobody goes on the ice until the Zamboni is off. Some rinks say you have to wait for the Zamboni doors to close. I suggest not being the first person at the door to get on the ice where you have to make that decision. Just stand somewhere in the middle or towards the back so that somebody else makes the decision of when you get on the ice as a team. They're probably more accustomed to when it's okay to do that and watch and learn as to when it's okay to do that so next time you don't even have to worry about it. So once you get on the ice, more than likely there's going to be a warm-up, however much time there is that should be in the rules of the league. Sometimes it's three minutes, sometimes it's five minutes. So during this time, just you skate around your defensive end, so your goalie is going to skate to one end, everyone on your team is going to skate to one end, and the whole point of this is just to warm up. So as soon as you get on the ice, go right to the bench, drop off your water bottle. If you do have an extra stick, put that in the bench as well. And then just start skating around, just start warming up, getting used to the feel of the ice. And eventually you can grab a puck. Stick handle the puck, you know, just play with it. And then when the goalie is looking, this is important. The goalie's going to prep their crease. They'll probably get a quick stretch in. You never, ever, ever shoot a puck at a goalie on your team who is not watching. If the game's in session and you're shooting on the other team and the goalie's not watching, go ahead, take a shot. But in warm-ups, if that goalie is not looking at you, is not set and ready in their stance, and is not looking at you directly, you don't shoot. Someone else is shooting, you wait for them to shoot and the goalie is gonna come out and address you. As soon as that happens, you shoot. If the goalies turn around, once again, don't shoot at the net, leave the goalie alone, skate around with the puck. You don't want to hurt your goalie in warm-ups. With that being said, keep your shots low, especially in the beginning. If you can raise the puck, don't to begin with. Give them shots right against their pads to start along the ice. And then as they start to warm up, start to raise it to their gloves if you can. Absolutely never take a slap shot to a goalie's head in warm-up. Your goalie will not like you. <laughs> your goalie will pinpoint you and keep it in their mind. Who, who did that? Um, don't hit the goalie in the head in warm-ups. Also, not the time to practice your deking on the goalie or your uh, breakaway shots unless the goalie specifically asks you to. Really, now is the time to get your goalie warm. It is for them, the shots, not for you. If you want to stretch during this time, that's cool too. Definitely something that can happen. So just, you'll see a bunch of people close to their bench, so close to your bench, your team's bench, will get down and do some stretching well, uh, other people are skating around and shooting on the goalie warming up. So you can definitely do that if that's something you want. The horn will sound and that ho horn means that it's time to pick up the pucks. So when you hear the horn or the ref whistle, that's another option. You pick up all the pucks and uh, either you put them in a bag or you put them on the bench. Uh, your teammates will help. Uh, but make sure you help pick up your pucks the first game. This is just uh, something that goes to show your attitude. 
and your, your willingness to help out. And a lot of people don't like picking up the pucks. But a lot of people do it anyways because you're part of a team and you need to contribute. So help pick up the pucks, especially your first game. After the pucks are picked up, usually there's some kind of like team huddle or discussion, sometimes at the bench, sometimes in the goalie crease, just kind of go where people are going. Um, you'll do probably a quick cheer, like a one, two, three, let's go, or something like that. And there'll be discussions of any last minute things, uh, whose line might start if you haven't already predetermined that. It's just gonna, there's gonna be a little discussion. You just go with it. So the first puck drop is gonna be at center ice. If you're not on the ice, if your line is not starting, then you're gonna be on the bench. So let's talk about the bench. So the forwards are usually in the door facing the attacking zone, which is where the other team's goalie is. And the defense are usually on the door facing your defending zone, which is where your goalie is. So there's usually a split. The forwards take up more room because there are generally more of them than the defensemen. And so the forwards go out that door and the defensemen go out that door. There's two doors. You got me? Cool. So put your water at your half, your end of the bench, um, somewhere towards the back of where everybody's sitting so that when you come off the ice and you sit down, your water will be right near you. Ask your teammates if you don't remember who the other person playing your position is. So if you're a left winger, you need to know who the other left wingers are because you're going to be taking them off the ice. If you don't know, if you've forgotten, just ask the person next to you. They're going to help you out. So changing on the fly, unless you're in Timbits, if there's no buzzer stop. So there's no buzzer or whistle to stop play to change. Everything happens as the game's happening. Sometimes, especially on whistles, people are going to want to change. That's cool. Uh, kind of listen to your team as to when we're changing or not. Somebody will make that call. If you have a coach, they're going to make that call. But so the way that changing works, if there's no whistle, is you'll see your position mate. So if you're playing left wing, you'll see your left wing come to the bench. And when they come to the bench, they're going to move to the side so that you can get out. So as soon as they get close to the bench, you get on the ice. They come off the ice as soon as you're on the ice. So priority is given to the person getting on the ice so that we always have people out there. Now, if you're coming off the ice and the puck is coming, ignore it. Completely ignore it. If you play it and the other player is already on the ice, you're going to get a too many men on the ice call. So when you're coming off, just come off, stand to the side just until somebody gets off the ice. Ignore all play that's happening and then pop into the, into the bench right away. Now, if you're closest to the door and your person isn't coming off, it's the right wing, say, and you're playing left wing, it's your responsibility to open and close the door. So open the door for the person leaving, and when the last person comes back onto the bench, close the door and make sure it latches. It's very important. Something you can also do to help this process is when you're coming off the ice, call out your position. So if you're left wing and you're coming off the ice, just call it left, left. And that way the left wing will get ready to go on the ice to replace you. Don't hop the bench unless you're 100% confident and sure that you can do it and you've done it before successfully. It can be very dangerous and it's actually quite a skill. So don't do it unless you know what you're doing. You probably might even kick one of your buddies with a skate on, not fun. The other thing is on the bench, drink water all the time. Drink water, drink so much water. It's so important to stay hydrated. You're gonna lose so much sweat when you're out there if you're working hard. Also keep your helmet on at all times and beware of flying pucks. So don't be taking off your cage and taking off your helmet. A lot of leagues have rules against this, but even if they don't, leave it on because you never know when a puck's going to come flying off the ice. And then at the end of each period, as the goalies switch sides, so do the benches. So just be aware of this. Now on the ice, we get to the beauty of the game. Everybody is just a player in gear, almost faceless. So we're all the same. Do your worst, a good team won't care. Now is the time to go out and have fun. Go out and be creative. Don't be too worried about, um, oh, well, there's a play that looks like this. More than likely, no one else is following plays anyways if you're in a rec league. But just go out and have some fun. Don't fight with the refs. If they say something, just agree with them. Especially if this is your first time in this league or your even first time playing hockey. You might not think you did anything. Just go to the box. Don't say anything. Ask 
your captain or whoever's leading your team once you get on on the ice again or on the bench again keep your head up even if you're not playing a in a checking league keep your head up because anything can happen you need to be aware of what is happening around you there could be other people who are beginners who don't have control of what they're doing so just be aware and try and adjust and keep yourself safe hockey is a high speed high impact game even when there is no checking also be careful in the corners and against the boards and don't be the guy that goes in in a rec league and starts pinning people against the boards or behind the neck we all, for the most part, have to go to work tomorrow morning. Let's keep that in mind. If they can come out with the puck, good for them. At least nobody got hurt. And now, what are some of my favorite tips. Have fun. Dance. I love to just dance at face-offs even if there's no music. It's fun. It lifts everybody's spirits. It, it breaks the seriousness around you. You'll notice for the most part, the other team will probably be smiling and laughing. Some people might join you. Just generally loosen up and have a good time. It's not all serious. We're not playing for the Stanley Cup here. Another important thing on the ice is be careful to not block the goalie's sight. The goalie needs to see the puck way more than you do. The goalie needs to see the puck probably more than you need to be in position in most cases. So just make sure you're not blocking their sight, especially at face-offs. Any puck that pops out from your goalie, swat away. Swat to the corners of the ice. So if your goalie thinks they have a puck and you see it loose, swat it just to, to the sides, just straight out as hard as you can, get it away from the net. Defend your goalie, especially if you're playing defense. Nobody should be coming near your goalie. So just stand up, stand in the way of anybody who's trying to charge them. Be creative. So if you see somebody coming, this happened to me a few times where you get so stuck and I wanna do what's right, I wanna do what exactly my position entails, I wanna be so cut and dry and doing, you know, not making mistakes, but um, as soon as I started allowing myself and I started realizing that this is about fun and this is the place to be creative, um, I started making some really sweet moves, if I might say, that I wouldn't have normally even tried. Work hard. So your shifts, you should, 30 seconds long should be enough. 30 seconds you should be huffing and puffing, you should be moving at all times, going at full speed at all times. So 30 seconds, work hard, get off the ice. If you are tired, get off the ice. If you want to make a good shift change, you just don't want to leave your team hanging, get the puck down the ice and get off the ice. Pro tip just in general, Wayne Gretzky once said that good players are where the puck is, but great players are where the puck is gonna be. If you keep this in mind from when you first start playing all the way through your hockey career, you're going to be an exceptional player because you're going to be thinking more along the lines of where is the puck going to be? Because the answer is that's where you need to be. You need to put yourself in positions where the puck is available to you. So you need to make yourself open. You need to move. You, you don't just stand still with a defender on you. You need to make yourself an option. When someone scores or does something great, celebrate. If you're on the bench, you do this by banging your stick against the boards in front of you, you'll take the cue from everyone around you. It's like clapping. Once somebody starts, everybody catches on. You also tend to like slap your stick against the boards um, or against the ice when somebody was hurt and is now standing up and moving off the ice as a sign of respect. You can also tap the goalie's pads lightly with your stick when they make a good save. So you just give them a light little tap with the stick on the pads. You don't come in and whack like a like a slash, just a nice little tap with the blade of your stick. Go, hey, nice save. Now, if you are hurt and you can't get off the ice or if you have hit your head, stay down. The play will be blown dead and people will be coming out to help. So even if you, you're not sure if you're hurt, but you hit your head, please just stay down, take a moment because sometimes you don't realize the extent of your injury until you've been still for a while. So after the game, everybody meets at center ice in a line. Usually the goalies go first and everybody shakes hands. It's pretty courteous to take off your glove and put it under your armpit. And if you have to, hold your stick in the opposite hand. Be careful with that stick because you can really whack people with that if you're not paying attention. And then you just either slap hands or you shake hands as you go down. You say good game, good game, good game, good game to every player you pass. Now you grab extra sticks and your water bottle and you go to the dressing room. Somebody will have the key to the lock and will open it up. Sometimes you gotta wait a bit, not a big deal. This is an excellent time in addition to, you should probably be doing this on the bench, asking for tips and advice and just anything that any teammate has to say um, and take that as constructive criticism. Don't be too hard on yourself with that. 
Um, there's if this is your first game, there might be a lot of things to improve upon, but just take it as homework. Great, you've got now you have more information to make yourself a better player. Sometimes after a big game, we like to hoot and holler in the dressing room. So you get in and there's just cheers and hooting and hollering. So if people go and start that, just join right in. Um, usually, sometimes there might be beer, like I mentioned earlier. So sometimes they'll crack open a beer. If you're not a beer drinker, bring a Coke along for yourself. Totally acceptable. It'll be roughly the same feeling as cracking open a beer with the boys or girls or whoever you're playing with, where you just, you come in after a hard game, you're sweating. Um, you're probably exhausted, especially if this is either your first game back or your first game ever. And so just collapsing onto the bench and opening a nice cold one, whether it's beer, whether it's pop, whether it's a, a sparkling or like a, a, a Pel San Pellegrino or whatever, it doesn't matter. Just, just, just sitting and having an ice cold drink is going to be amazing. And then having the companionship after having just played a hard game just adds to it. It's part of the fun. It's part of the camaraderie. It's part of um, the whole bond that comes with the game. I personally like to, the second I get in the dressing room, at least take my tops off. It's hot. I like to breathe. I get my helmet, my gloves, my jersey, my shoulder pads, my elbow pads, um, my neck guard. Just, I get that all off and in my bag um, before I can, before I just collapse into the bench for five, 10 minutes. Um, so that's completely up to you if you want to stay fully clothed, if you want to get fully undressed, uh, if you want to just gauge what other people are doing, that's on you. Uh, if you want to shower, now is probably the time once you're undressed and you can, if you're kind of like, I don't know how I feel about it, um, if you just take your time getting undressed, uh, you can watch and see what other people do. If other people are going to the shower, if people aren't. Um, now if you haven't learned if people go after anywhere after the game, people might be suggesting it at this point, or you can ask like, hey, you know, anybody going anywhere? Or you can offer like, uh, oh, hey, like if anybody wants to get a beer, uh, you know, I'm thinking about in this place, anybody want to come? Um, so you can kind of get that going if you need to. I do want to say that if you are showering, don't use any kind of like heavy perfumes in the room. Some people might have allergies. It's also generally a really humid, stuffy space. So not the best place to be like spraying your Chanel number, whatever. Um, just kind of like if you want to put that on, wait until you're outside or in your own car um, and don't do it in the room because that stuff can choke you out real quick. <laughs> Make sure before you put your skates away that the blades and the chassis are completely dry or as dry as you can get them with your skate towel and that you've put your skate guards back on. Also, thank folks for making their first game memorable, for making it fun, for being friendly, whatever the truth for you is, just, you know, hey, like, I was really nervous, thanks for making this a very awesome experience for me. So if people are going to the bar, the pub, a restaurant, whatever, go. I don't care if you're exhausted, you're gonna be exhausted, you're gonna be dog tired, you're just gonna wanna go to sleep more than likely, but, the first game going out afterwards when you're brand new is going to leave a lasting impression on your team. Now, if you have commitments and you really can't, that's understandable. But if you at all can, I highly recommend it. It's also going to start those bonds and friendships forming. And the thing is, like, even if you don't go next week or the week after, people are going to remember that you came the first time. And I'd say plan to spend at least an hour out. The bonus is sometimes people go to sponsors and sponsors offer you deals on food or drinks. Um, sometimes even in my one league, they offer us free nachos. So we go to the sponsor after the game and we get a full like extra large team size nachos for free. And the good news is then we're also providing um, business to our sponsors because we're usually going in buying a round of beers. People get food because you had that light meal before the game, which means now is time to eat the carbs. So after, when you get home, air out your gear, whichever way you've decided to air it out, air out your gear, get it dry. Put everything that can be washed, um, that you're gonna wash regularly. So like your Jill, your under things, your jersey, your socks, get that in the washing machine, get that clean. Don't let it sit and don't let it fester. Shower if you haven't. <laughs> um, hockey stink is a special kind of stink and when it dries on your skin, it's not pleasant. Make sure you eat if you haven't at the bar, if you didn't go to the bar. Sit down, relax, because you did it. You did it. 
and all of that took a lot of courage and a lot of prep and probably a lot of money and you did it and hopefully you had an amazing time. So if you want to tell me about your first game, if you want to let other folks know about uh, your game, if you have any other tips, trips, tricks, any kind of culture pieces that I've missed, you can put it down in the comments. Um, please, like, if we can make this a forum, that would be great uh, where beginners can come and find tons of information. I just, I want to make sure that's getting spread and that this game spreads because uh, the lovely thing about hockey is that hockey is for everyone. Thanks for watching.